Good evening aspirants welcome to the Hindu news analysis by Shankar IAS Academy for the day 2nd May 2021 These are the list of news articles that will be discussed in today's news analysis they are provided along with the page numbers of the different editions of the newspaper Hope you people are aware that we have introduced a new segment in our news discussion from yesterday and in this segment we'll be discussing a few previous year's prelims questions each day for the benefit of aspirants So now let's move on to the session Now let us take up this question which of the following protected areas are located in the Kaveri basin and the options given include Nagarhole National Park Papikonda National Park Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve and the Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary and we need to find the correct answer see Kaveri basin lies in the states of Tamil Nadu Karnataka Kerala and Pondicherry when you take the Nagarhole National Park which is also called as the Rajiv Gandhi National Park it is located in Kodagu and Mysore district of Karnataka which lies in the Kaveri basin note that Nagarhole park is declared as the 37th tiger reserve in India next comes the Papikonda National Park It spreads over the east and west Godavari districts near Godavari basin of Andhra Pradesh. Now here you should remember it lies in Godavari basin and not in Kaveri basin. Coming to the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve, it is located in the Kaveri basin that is situated about 88 km from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu and it finds itself at the joining of the eastern and western ghats. And finally on coming to the Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary, See the Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary is located in the southern trenches of the famous Western Ghats and it is ranked 8th in the list of the world's biodiversity hotspots. This Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary lies in the Kaveri basin of Kerala and it is renowned for having a huge number of Asian elephants and tigers. And apart from this it also has leopards, jungle cats, leopard cats, spotted deer, samba deer, gaur, sloth bear, wild dog, wild boar, then indian pangolin striped necked mongoose and a plethora of other mammals as well so based on this analysis all the options except the second one are a part of the kaveri basin that is only papikonda remains entirely inside the east and west godavari districts near the godavari basin and therefore the answer is option c that is 1 3 and 4 only Now look at this question the experiment will employ a trio of spacecraft flying in formation in the shape of an equilateral triangle that has sides 1 million km long with lasers shining between the craft the experiment in the question refers to option A Voyager 2 option B New Horizons option C Lisa Pathfinder and option D Evolved Lisa and the right answer is option D that is Evolved Lisa now let's see in brief about the four options when you take option 1 that is Voyager 2 it is related to space exploration see Voyager 2 is a pair of robotic US interplanetary probes that was launched to observe and to transmit information to earth about the giant planets of the outer solar system and the farthest reaches of the sun sphere of influence whereas new horizons is a us space probe that flew by the dwarf planet pluto and its largest moon charon in july 2015 and know that it was the first space probe to visit pluto also lisa pathfinder formerly the small missions for advanced research in technology 2 or smart 2 is an esa spacecraft that was launched on december 3 2015 and it began orbiting a point called the earth sun l1 which is roughly 930000 miles that is approximately 1.5 million kilometers from the earth in the sun's direction see lisa pathfinder is a mission that was led by the european space agency which is also called as esa with contributions from nasa and this lisa pathfinder has successfully tested a key technology that is needed to build a space based observatory for detecting gravitational waves and coming to e lisa or the evolved laser interferometer spaced antenna it is an experiment that will employ a trio of spacecraft flying in formation in the shape of an equilateral triangle that is sides 1 million km long with lasers shining between the craft and therefore the right answer is option d that is evolved laser now let us take up this question with reference to the 
visible light communication technology which of the following statements are correct statement 1 vlc uses electromagnetic spectrum wavelengths 375 to 718 nanometer statement 2 vlc is known as long range optical wireless communication statement 3 vlc can transmit large amounts of data faster than bluetooth and statement 4 vlc has no electromagnetic interference and we need to find the correct answer using the code that is given below C visible light communication is a data communications variant which uses visible light between 400 and 800 terahertz that is a wavelength of 780 to 375 nanometer so the first statement is correct coming to the second statement it is partially correct because VLC is a subset of optical wireless communication technologies but it is short range communication and not long range as given in the question so the second statement is wrong See the VLC technology they use fluorescent lamps to transmit signals at 10 kilobit per second or LEDs for up to 500 megabit per second over short distances and there are also types of VLC such as LiFi which can transmit signals at several megabits per second and this is much faster than bluetooth also aside from the size of the visible light spectrum light travels 186000 miles per second which is way faster than the 344 meters per second that is traveled by radio waves in hair that is used by bluetooth so statement 3 is also correct also visible light communication is a preferred communication technique because of its high bandwidth and immunity to interference from electromagnetic sources so based on this statement 4 is also correct and since the question wants us to find the correct answer the right option is option c that is 1 3 and 4 only now let us take up this question what is the importance of using pneumococcal conjugate vaccines in india statement 1 these vaccines are effective against pneumonia as well as meningitis and sepsis statement 2 dependence on antibiotics that are not effective against drug resistant bacteria can be reduced and statement 3 these vaccines have no side effects and cause no allergic reactions select the correct answer using the given code below and the right answer is option b that is 1 and 2 only Now let's see why this option is correct. C pneumococcal conjugate vaccines or PCV they prevent pneumococcal disease and this vaccine is a mix of several bacteria of the pneumococci family which are known to cause pneumonia and therefore conjugate is included in the name of the vaccine. Usually these conjugate vaccines are made using a combination of two different components. Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine can prevent pneumococcal disease which refers to any illness that is caused by pneumococcal bacteria and this vaccine is highly effective against meningitis sepsis and pneumonia so therefore statement 1 is correct also pneumococcal b conjugate vaccines have reduced the burden of antibiotic resistant bacterial disease globally says the lancet study report of 2017 so statement 2 is also correct see vaccines as tools to reduce antimicrobial resistance have historically been under recognized yet the positive effect in reducing antimicrobial resistant has been well established for example haemophilus influenzae type b as well as streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcal conjugate vaccines have impressive track records in not only preventing life threatening diseases caused by these bacteria but also in reducing antibiotic use and antimicrobial resistance and when you take this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine it has got mild side effects like mild soreness or hardness at the site of the injection lasting from 1 to 3 days a slightly raised temperature and more serious side effects of this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine such as allergic reactions are quite rare so therefore statement 3 is wrong because it says that it has got no side effects and cause no allergic reactions so therefore the right answer is option b that is 1 and 2 only now let us take up this faq article this faq article is about the recent fires in indian hospitals see over the past year there have been deadly fires in hospital buildings including those treating covid-19 patients these infernos have caused huge loss of life and property for example fires in hospitals at baruch in gujarat and virar and mumbra in maharashtra have killed at least 37 people and this article is a discussion on that now let's see what this article has got to say the syllabus covered by this article is highlighted below for your reference see fires occur in many public buildings in india every year 
and these fires kill a large number of people and they also injure many according to the national crime records bureau 330 people died in commercial building fires in 2019 while fatalities for residential or dwelling buildings were much higher at 6329 see the national crime records bureau abbreviated to ncrb is an indian government agency that is responsible for collecting and analyzing crime data as defined by the ipc and special and local laws Now coming back to the article see in many of the fire accidents electrical faults were cited as the leading cause of fires but many experts do believe that it is the inadequacy of the state government which caused these fire accidents see the state governments are being lax when it comes to the building safety laws and they also fail to equip the public buildings with modern technology now say for example let us take hospital icus or intensive care units As you know the ICUs are a great fire risk because they are oxygen suffused so they need to meet high standards of safety in order to avoid fire accidents but most of these state governments do not take the necessary steps to provide such safety now before discussing the issues and compliances first let us learn about the national building code of india see the national building code is a basic model code that is published by the bureau of indian standards or bis Part 4 of this code provides specifications and guidelines for design and materials that reduce the threat of destructive fires. Under this code all existing and new buildings are classified by nature of use such as residential, educational, institutional, assembly, business, mercantile, industry, storage and sardis. When you take hospitals they come under the institutional category. Note that the first edition of NBC was published in 1970 and the second edition in 2005 and the recent edition was published in 2016 which is the third one. Now let us see about its recommendations. Firstly, the NBC recommends the location of buildings by type of use in specific zones. This will ensure that the industrial and hazard structures do not coexist with residential, institutional, office and business buildings. Secondly, it specifies the technical requirements for special buildings, high rises, educational and institutional buildings that are higher than 9 meters and those with an area of over 300 square meters. Such specific technical requirements will prevent accidents to a greater extent. And thirdly, when it comes to fire safety, the code recommends the specifics of fire resistance based on the materials that are used in exterior walls, interior wall bearings, floor, roof, fire check doors, fire enclosure exists and so on. Next, the code also specifies the technologies to alert and fight the fire. For example, the code talks about the automatic fire detection and alarm system, down comber pipelines connected to a roof tank, then dry riser pipelines that firefighters can use to douse upper floors, automatic sprinklers and water sprays, then fireman's lift, fire barriers, escape routes, markings and so on and so forth. See, incorporating these technologies into a proper design and ensuring that certified fire resistant materials are used in the construction can reduce these fire accidents to a greater extent even after having such norms why is the fire accident still occurring and what is the problem behind see national building code is a recommendatory document and the states have been asked to incorporate them into their local building bylaws also fire prevention and fire protection is a state subject so the rules for fire prevention and fire protection are laid in the form of state regulations or municipal bylaws and most of the states have incorporated nbc in their safety laws but they do not practice or enforce it For example let us take Maharashtra see Maharashtra has had the fire prevention and life safety measures act since 2008 section 3 of this act make the provisions of the nbc mandatory and also schedule 1 of this act is borrowed from the code so the state of maharashtra has incorporated the nbc in their state laws but they have not been able to follow or enforce this act For example, inspection of public buildings is not carried out on a regular basis. Also many public buildings do not have proper functioning fire extinguisher. See the above lack of compliance was also stressed in a CAG report and according to this report only 11 out of 53 inspected public buildings in Maharashtra have proper fire fighting installations like the fire extinguishers. Also states like Kerala and Tamil Nadu have not properly incorporated the NBC terms in their local fire fighting laws. which makes their enforcement even tougher the discussed shortcomings have caused a lot of fire accidents in recent times now let us discuss some of the steps that is taken by the government to overcome it 
See, recently, the Supreme Court of India has directed all the states to carry out fire safety audits of dedicated COVID-19 hospitals in order to prevent further accidents. Also, the central government's fire safety committee is planning to conduct periodic audits on fire installation, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, then on electrical substation and other electrical equipment in the union government's hospitals. And in addition to that, the health ministry also circulated strict guidelines stipulating third party accreditation for fire safety in hospitals. And adding to that, the National Disaster Management Authority has stipulated requirements for fire safety in public buildings, including hospitals, which incorporate elements of the NBC, besides design guidelines on maintaining minimum open safety space, protected exit mechanisms, dedicated staircases, and crucial drills to carry. See, with the recent fire accidents, it has become evident that the state forces lack the manpower to inspect and ensure compliance with safety codes, including the NBC. So, the article suggests for making heavy fire liability insurance compulsory for all public buildings because such an insurance would offer protection to occupants and visitors and they will bring about external inspection of safety and it will also force the hospitals to follow safety guidelines and to adopt modern technologies in firefighting so with this information let's move on to the next news discussion now look at this news article this article reports about the court refusing to stay the counting of votes for the local body elections in UP after the state and the election commission gave reassurance about COVID safety protocol. So in this context, let us see about Panjayati Raj system in India. The syllabus covered by this news article is given below. Panjayat is the name of the local government system in India and it means a group of five persons. But in practice, a panchayat is a council of elders representing a village and a panchayati raj is a form of government at the village level where each village is responsible for its own activities. Ancient India had some similar form of local governance but formal institutionalization came with the Magna Carta of local democracy in British India that is the Ripon Resolution of 1882 providing for rural local boats. Next, the Montego Clemsford reforms of 1919 made local self-government government under the proposed scheme of diarchy a transferred subject. And following independence, the first draft of India's constitution did not include any provision for the panchayat. And this is despite Gandhiji seeking to make village panchayats the very foundation of democracy in independent India. Subsequently, it was included only as a DPSP provision under Article 40. And in the course of time, Balwin Thrai Mehta Committee, Ashok Mehta Committee, Tungtan Committee, Gargil Committee, they gave recommendations in favour of Panchayati Raj being institutionalised. At last, through the 73rd Amendment to the Constitution, constitutional status was accorded to the Panchayats and the Act provided a complete framework and also it imparted certainty to it. So what are the constitutional changes it brought about? See, the 73rd Amendment Act of 1992 has added a new part that is Part 9 consisting of 16 articles and the 11th Schedule to the Constitution. The 11th Schedule of the Constitution created by the amendment contains 29 subjects on which the Panjayat shall have administrative control and the 73rd Amendment envisages the Gram Sabha as the foundation of the Panjayat Raj system to perform functions and powers entrusted to it by the state legislatures. See, Gram Sabha consists of the adults of the electoral role in that village. The Amendment Act of 1992 contains provision for passing the powers and responsibilities to the Panjayat for preparation of plans for economic development and social justice. And by that, the Panjayat system covers the village level or the Gram Panjayat the clusters of villages or the block panchayat and the district level that is the district panchayat. One notable aspect of Panjayati Raj institution is its socially inclusive character. See clause 3 of article 243d ensures participation of women in Panjayati Raj institutions and the amendment provided that one third of the seats in all Panjayat councils as well as one third of the Pradhan positions must be reserved for women. Seats in Pradhan positions were also reserved for the two disadvantaged minorities in India that is the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes. This reservation was in the form of mandated representation proportional to each minority's population share in each district. And in terms of clause 4 of article 243d, the officers of the chairpersons in the panchayats at the village or any other level shall be reserved for the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes and women. 
While reservations for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes are in place in other elected bodies like national and state legislative assemblies, the 73rd Amendment is the first one in India that mandated women's reservation and this made it a landmark piece of legislation. Further, reservation for the OBC candidates can be provided by states by passing legislation to that effect and this has led to significant social upliftment. But the Panchayati Raj institution has been consistently criticized at various fronts. One is that the state governments which has to devolve the powers is reluctant to do so, thereby making the Panchayati Raj institutions powerless to carry out governance functions. Secondly, the tax collection power of the Panchayati Raj institution is limited, so its coffers are almost always dependent on the state government, thereby compromising the political independence it was envisaged to experience. Thirdly, various studies point to the distrust in the Panchayati Raj institutions and people seem to be looking at it as a political institution and this is more evident in the Pisa areas that is the tribal Panchayat areas. So therefore addressing these issues is an urgent need to ensure smooth functioning of these grassroots level institutions and the Gram Swaraj dream of Mahatma Gandhi and the power to the people dream of Rajiv Gandhi are the essence of true democracy and making it a reality lies in policy corrections. So with this, let's move on to the next news article. Now let us take up this news article. This article is regarding the first blow away galaxy that was discovered by Gemini telescope. So in this context, let us discuss about this discovery. The syllabus covered by this article is given below for your reference. See, a new study led by the astrophysicist from the University of Minnesota shows that high energy light from small galaxies may have played a key role in the early evolution of the universe. See, after the Big Bang, when the universe was formed billions of years ago, it was in an ionized state. This means that the electrons and protons, they floated freely throughout space. And as the universe expanded and started cooling down, it changed to a neutral state when the protons and electrons, they combined into atoms akin to water vapor condensing into a cloud. Now, however, scientists have observed that the universe is back in an ionized state and a major endeavor in astronomy is figuring out how this happened. Astronomers have theorized that the energy for reionization must have come from galaxies themselves, but it's incredibly hard for enough high energy light to escape a galaxy due to the hydrogen clouds within it that absorbing the light. And this is more like the clouds in Earth's atmosphere that absorb sunlight on an overcast day. So in this context, the recent findings are very important. See, using the data from the Gemini telescope, the researchers have observed the first ever galaxy in a blow away state. See, this means that the hydrogen clouds have been removed, allowing the high energy light to escape. And the scientists suspect that the blow away was caused by many supernovas or dying stars exploding in a short period of time. Here, the researchers compare the star formation with blowing up of the balloon. If the star formation was more intense, then there would be a rupture or hole made in the surface of the balloon to let out some of that energy and in the case of this galaxy the star formation was so powerful that the balloon was torn into pieces note that the galaxy studied by the researchers is named as pox 186 it is so small that it could fit inside the milky way so what made the blow away possible in this galaxy the reason for this could be its compact size coupled with its large population of stars which amount to a hundred thousand times the mass of the sun and the findings confirm that a blow away is possible, furthering the idea that small galaxies were primarily responsible for the reionization of the universe. And this is giving more insight into how the universe became what it is today. If this one scenario is possible, then that means that there are other galaxies that also existed in blow away states in the past. And understanding the consequences of this blow away gives direct insight into the impacts of similar blowaways during the process of reionization. With this information, finally, let us discuss the Gemini Observatory, which was used for this discovery. See, the Gemini Observatory, it consists of twin 8.1 meter diameter optical or infrared telescopes it is located on two of the best observing sites on the planet and the two are located in Hawaii known as Gemini North and in Chile known as Gemini South. The twin telescopes provide nearly complete coverage of the sky and are among the world's most advanced optical or infrared telescopes. This Gemini Observatory is owned and it is operated by a consortium of partners from the US, Canada, Chile, Brazil and 
Argentina. See, the Gemini telescopes have been used to make invaluable observations of extrasolar planets and the recently deployed Gemini Planet Imager, which is also called as GPI, it allows direct imaging and analysis of exoplanets that are a millionth as bright as their host star. And the telescopes are also used for a number of other studies that are relevant to astrobiology, including observations of the solar system, star formation and evolution, the structure and dynamics of galaxies, and also on distant quasars. With this, we have come to the end of this news discussion. Let's now move on to the next news article. Now, our next discussion is going to be based on this news article. See, recently, the geographical indication or GI tag was sought for Mati Bananas, and this article is related to that. So, in this context, let us learn about Mati Banana and also about the GI tag. See, Mati Banana is a particular variety of banana that is cultivated in many parts of Nagar Koil and Batmanababuram in Tamil Nadu. Mati Banana is also used by the tribes of Western Ghats for curing jaundice. Coming to GI tag, See, GI is an indication that is used on products that have a specific geographical location and this GI tag will preserve the qualities and reputation of a product from that defined geographical locality. Know that the Geographical Indications of Goods Registration and Protection Act of 1999 aims to provide for the registration and better protection of geographical indications and the tags are used by the Office of the Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks. And it comes under the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Note that the registration of a GI is valid for a period of 10 years and it can be renewed from time to time for a further period of 10 years each. On talking about its significance, see the GI tag conveys an assurance of quality and distinctiveness which is essentially attributable to the place of its origin. And also once the GI protection is granted, no other producer can misuse the name to market similar products and it also provides comfort to customers about the authenticity of that particular product. At the international level, geographical indications are covered as a component of intellectual property rights under the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property and GI is also governed by the World Trade Organization's Agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights. And on coming to India, Geographical Indications Registration is administered by the Geographical Indications of Goods Registration and Protection Act of 1999, which came into force with effect from September 2003. And note that the first product in India to be accorded with GI tag was Darjeeling Tea in the year 2004 to 2005. So with this, we have come to the end of this particular news article. Let's move on to the next news discussion. Now look at this article. This article says that the gross revenue from goods and services tax hit a record eye of 1.41 lakh crore in April. See the tax collection has been above 1 lakh crore for the last 7 months continuously. And this suggests that the economic activity is not yet badly affected due to the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. And in this analysis, we will discuss about GST, its features and the information related to GST Council. The syllabus relevant for the analysis is highlighted here for your reference. First, let us see the trend in monthly gross GST revenues during the period October 2020 to April 2021. So you can see that in the last seven months, the GST collections have been above 1 lakh crore and the article highlight the factors that might have been the reasons behind all high GST collections in April. And these are factors like economic recovery, anti-evasion measures and year-end financial closures of the companies. Now let us see about the GST and its relevant features. The Goods and Service Tax Act was passed in the Parliament in 2017 and it came into effect on 1st July 2017. In relation to this, the 101st Constitutional Amendment Act of 2016 was enacted. This Act added Clause 12A to Article 366 and this clause under the Article 366 defines GST as a tax on supply of goods or services or both except taxes on the supply of the alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Apart from alcohol, electricity, petroleum products are also kept outside GST temporarily. 
To make it simple, know that GST is a destination based tax on consumption of goods and services. It is levied at all stages right from production to final consumption along with the provision of input tax credits wherever applicable. When we say input tax credit, we refer to the reduction in the tax already paid on inputs. As a result, the person will actually in the end would have paid only the actual tax on the value added. Know that GST is a single domestic indirect tax for the entire country and GST has multiple tax rate slabs for different categories of products like 5%, 12%, 18% and 28%. The list of items that would fall under these multiple slabs are worked out by the GST council. See, it is a dual GST with a centre and the state simultaneously levying tax on a common base. GST to be levied by the centre is called the Central GST or the CGST and that to be levied by the state is called the State GST or the SGST. Import of goods or services would be treated as interstate supplies and it would be subject to integrated goods and services tax which is also called as IGST in addition to the applicable customs duties. In case of IGST, the tax is levied and collected by the Government of India, that is the central government. Note that the collected amount under IGST is shared between the union and the states as per law. Legally, the constitution under Article 246A, Clause 1, empowers the states to make laws with respect to GST imposed by the union or by such state. But under Clause 2 of Article 246A, only parliament has exclusive power to make laws with respect to IGST. Now, let's focus on the GST Council. As per Article 279A of the Constitution, the GST Council is a joint forum of the Centre and the States. It is a constitutional body under Article 279A and under this article, GST Council is constituted by the President to administer and govern GST. The Finance Minister of India is the Chairman of the Council and the Council also includes the Union Minister of State in charge of Revenue of Finance as its member. Then it also includes Ministers nominated by the State Governments as its members. C. The GST Council is devised in such a way that the centre will have one-third voting power and the states will have two-third voting power and the decisions are taken by three-fourth majority. One-half of the total number of members of the GST Council shall constitute the quorum at its meeting and the council is empowered to make recommendations to the union and also to the states. Because of the composition, voting power, etc., the mechanism of GST Council ensures harmonization on different aspects of GST between the center and the states as well as among the states. Now, if you take the news article, it also lists the breakup of tax collected under GST where it mentions about the GST cess collections of about 9,000 crores. See, generally a cess is a form of tax that is charged over and above the base tax liability of a taxpayer and it is usually imposed when the state or the central government looks to raise funds for specific purposes. Here, GST cess is levied and collected for a specific purpose and the purpose is for providing compensation to the states for the loss of revenue arising on account of implementation of the goods and services tax. So with this, we have come to the end of this news discussion. Let's move on to the next news article. Now look at this news article. This article is about a form of string puppetry in Assam called Putola Nash. It says that a trust in Assam in association with UNICEF Assam has produced videos using this string puppetry for creating mass awareness of COVID appropriate behavior. Know that Putala or Putola Nash is a traditional string puppet theater from Assam. Here Putal means doll and Nash means dance. And this remains popular in Assam whereas other forms of puppetry and shadow theater have disappeared. This puppetry mainly performs Ramayana either entirely or by episodes as well as scenes from the Mahabharata. According to some sources, Shankara Devi, the Vaishnavite saint of Assam, had employed it to propagate the new Vaishnavism in the 15th century and in his time the puppeteer was called Tatakya Bajikar. Have a look at the image for better understanding. Know that puppetry has played an important role in disseminating knowledge in most parts of the world and it imbibes elements of all art forms such as literature, painting, sculpture, music, dance, drama, etc. And puppetry has been used traditionally in India as a popular and an inexpensive medium to transmit knowledge about Indian myths and legends. The most important types of puppets in India are string puppets, shadow puppets, 
rod puppets and glow puppets now let's see in brief about each of them see india has a rich and ancient tradition of string puppets or marionettes marionettes having jointed limbs controlled by strings allow far greater flexibility and are therefore the most articulate of the puppets examples of these are the kathputli in rajasthan kundai in orissa gombi atta in karnataka and the bommal atam in tamil nadu Next comes the shadow puppets. See they are flat figures and they are cut out of leather which has been treated to make it translucent. Shadow puppets are pressed against the screen with a strong source of light behind it. And examples of these are Togalu, Gombi Atta in Karnataka, Tholu Bommalatta in Andhra Pradesh and the Ravana Chaya in Orissa. Coming to rod puppets, they are an extension of glove puppets but often much larger and supported and manipulated by rods from below this form of puppetry now is found mostly in west bengal and odisha examples are putul nauch in west bengal and yampuri in bihar finally on coming to the glove puppets which is also called as sleeve and or palm puppets for these puppets the head is made of either papier mache cloth or wood with two hands emerging from just below the neck and the rest of the figure consists of a long flowing skirt the manipulation technique in this glow puppets are simple with movements being controlled by human hands note that in kerala the traditional glove puppet play is called pavakoot so with this let us now move on to the prelims practice question discussion now let us take up this prelims practice question regarding gemini observatory statement 1 says that it consists of twin optical infrared telescopes more than 8 meter diameter located completely in north america statement 2 says it helps in studying astrobiology including observations of the solar system star formation and evolution and statement 3 says that recently it has helped to observe the first ever galaxy in a blown away state when you look at statement 1 it is incorrect because the gemini observatory consists of twin 8.1 meter diameter optical infrared telescopes is located in two places one is hawaii known as gemini north and the next one is chile known as gemini south and when you look at the other two options based on our discussion we can conclude that they both are correct and therefore the right option is option b that is 2 and 3 only now let us discuss this question about the gst council statement 1 says it is a statutory body established under goods and services tax act 2017 and statement 2 says The council is devised in such a way that the states will have one third voting power and the center will have two third voting power. See, when you take statement one, as per Article two hundred and seventy nine A of the Constitution, the GST Council is a joint forum of the center and the states, and it is a constitutional body under Article two hundred and seventy nine A. And under this article, GST Council is constituted by the president to administer and govern GST. And therefore, statement one is wrong. On coming to the second statement, the council is devised in such a way that the center will have one third voting power and the states will have. Two third voting power, and the decisions are taken by three fourth of the majority, and the council is empowered to make recommendations to the union and also to the states. And hence, second statement is also wrong. And since the question wants us to identify the correct statements, the right option is option D, that is neither one nor two. Now look at this question about the geographical indication tag. Statement one says the geographical indication tag helps consumers to get quality products of desired trades. And statement two says the GI tag is valid for a period of twenty years. So when you look at the first statement, it is correct because the GI tag conveys an assurance of quality and distinctiveness, which is essentially attributable to the place of its origin. and it provides comfort to customers about the authenticity of the product and it also helps customers to get quality products of desired trades and when you take the second statement which says that the tag is valid for a period of 20 years this statement is wrong because the gi tag is valid for a period of 10 years and not 20 years and since the question wants us to find the correct statement the right answer is option a that is one only Now let us take up this question with reference to India's puppetry and their native. We need to find the correctly matched pair. So when you take the first pair, it is incorrect because the traditional marionettes of Rajasthan are known as Kathputli. See, in Kathputli, the puppets are carved from a single piece of wood, and these puppets are like large dolls that are colorfully dressed. I know that their costumes and headgears are designed in the medieval Rajasthani style of dress, which is prevalent even today. and when you look at the other three options they all are correct that is they all are correctly matched 
So the right option is option C that is 2, 3 and 4 only. The list of main questions is provided here. You can write your answer and post them in the comment section below. With this we have come to the end of today's Indo news analysis. If you like the video don't forget to like, comment and share and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates regarding UPSC civil services preparation.